Hello and welcome to the overview of the Get Focus, Stay Focus follow-up modules, part two of the six-part series. Today we will um, begin with welcomes and introductions. So welcome, my name is Erin Hansen and I had the privilege of being the Get Focus, Stay Focus coordinator at Carpinteria High School and piloting the first dual enrollment freshman transition course as well as implementing the follow-up modules. Today, we are going to begin by going through an overview of the webinar series, an overview of the Get Focus, Stay Focus modules, and an in-depth implementation strategies. We will also have time for questions and answers, so please jot down any questions you have, and we will make sure that we get to them at the end. So this is a six-part series. The first webinar focused on an overview of the Get Focus, Stay Focus modules. And this goes over the content as well as some general implementation strategies. Today, we're going to focus on the implementation strategies for Get Focus, Stay Focus modules. And later, there will be an in-depth review of Module 1, Module 2, and Module 3. And the final webinar will focus on the counselor integration to the Get Focus, Stay Focus follow-up modules. So Get Focus, Stay Focus has a 10-step implementation plan and is divided into three planning phases. Phase one is awareness and stakeholder buy-in. Phase two is freshman course planning and implementation. And phase three is planning and implementation for a Get Focus, Stay Focus school-wide initiative. I want to walk you through these steps because I want you to think about where you are in the implementation process. So phase one is gathering your resources, creating a vision, and forming a team of champions in order to generate school and community buy-in. So this is the initial work prior to even implementing the freshman course. And we do really want to encourage you to take the time to share what Get Focus, Stay Focused is. Make sure you have a group of individuals who's willing to move the initiative forward and letting the community know um, how this program can benefit them. Phase two is the structuring of your freshman course, recruiting your most experienced instructors to conduct these courses, and providing professional development and course planning timeline. So this is really focused on the freshman class and make sure, making sure that it goes well so that the follow-up modules can build upon what was done well in the freshman year. Phase three is beginning to take your Get Focus, Stay Focus initiative school-wide. Um, the ways in which you can do this is by integrating the three follow-up modules into your schedule, identifying a lead teacher or administrator as your Get Focus, Stay Focus point person, and holding a school-wide launch. Step nine is to share all students' tenure, career, and education plans for counseling, advisory, and academic coaching. And finally, step ten is to evaluate the success of your program, invigorate, and celebrate what you've accomplished through the implementation of the Get Focus, Stay Focus program. So I want to give you a minute to refer um, to determine where you are in the planning phases. Make sure you are through phase two before implementing the Get Focus, Stay Focus follow-up modules. Um, you can visit 3-2 and 3-9 in the Get Focus, Stay Focus program and instructional manual to view the 10-step plan for implementation. And I do recommend and will refer to the program manual throughout today's webinar because it's a wonderful resource to help with implementation. So, one of the main aspects of implementing the follow-up modules is for teachers to recognize the benefit of the 10-year plan to the students as well as to them as their teachers and advisors. So after implementing the ninth grade course, give every teacher a username and login for mytenureplan.com. Give them time during faculty meetings to review their students' 10-year plans and have a student panel present the benefit of the course. Uh, one way to launch the follow-up modules is to make sure, again, that teachers understand the value that the 10-year plan has to them. And as a classroom teacher, I feel that it's a real challenge to individualize instruction and differentiate teaching and really get to know students when you have 36 kids in a class. However, with the 10-year plan, you can really see what they've identified as their passions, their values, their strengths, and the careers that they hope to have. So I want to encourage you to share the online 10-year plans and make sure that your faculty has access to them. So when we think about the modules, um, they are designed to have 16 lessons in each module, and this equals one unit of optional dual credit. 
you do not have to have dual credit in order to make the Get Focus, Stay Focus program successful. However, it is obviously a great bonus, and it helps students feel that they are college ready um, early on. But what you'll see here is you'll see um, the 16 lessons, and you have Module 1, Module 2, and Module 3 aligned next to each other. And I want to give you a second to, I know it's small print, but just to note the way that the, the lessons are sequenced. Um, each module is specific to the needs of the student in, um, in a given grade level or where they are in their succession as a high school student. So you'll see, for example, um, in Module 1, they're going to research high demand careers. In Module 2, they're going to create a career interest survey for a STEM career. And then in Module 3, they're going to actually take time to develop an action plan and checklist for the future that they hope to have. So right now, take a few seconds to review and see how um, the modules are designed and the scope and sequence of the content of each module. So read it going down and then read it across. All right, so from here, we're going to transition into the placement of these 16 lessons. And we want to tell you there's no one way in which you can implement the follow-up modules. It depends upon your school. But we're going to go through different options, some of which I've tried implementing at Carpentry High School and ones that other schools have implemented. And we're going to give the advantages and challenges, and then we'll also share what we ultimately landed on at Carpentry High School. So one of the first ways to implement the module is in an advisory system. This is where an advisor, or an extended learning is what we call it, um, has grade-specific courses. And all teachers, depending on the grade level that they have, provide instruction in the follow-up module. So for example, um, if you have a 10th grade advisory, you would teach the first module one. Um, and this serves as a homeroom class, and every teacher has that cohort who they'll then follow throughout the four years. Again, as I mentioned earlier, the 10-year plan is an amazing resource. And imagine having those students over you know, three or four, or four years and being able to watch their development of their online 10-year plan. The great advantage to this is that all teachers participate in the Get Focus, Stay Focus implementation. Um, I will say that the challenge is that now you are training all teachers to feel confident and comfortable with those 16 lessons. But then again, it's only 16 lessons. So I think as long as you do the, the appropriate amount of professional development beforehand, they should be able to feel very confident with um, walking students through the modules. Um, also, with, this, with the entire faculty teaching the modules, um, fidelity can be a challenge. So just making sure that um, teachers are teaching the follow-up modules at a similar time, um, and that there's somebody who's checking in to make sure that it is getting done. Another option is implementing um, it within the advisory, but instead having master teachers. So again, you would have all teachers have grade-specific advisories, um, and this would be their homeroom home class. However, you would have a small cohort of teachers, let's say five teachers, um, who throughout the year would have cohorts of students go into, um, let's say, the computer lab. They would teach those students the follow-up modules for those 16 lessons, and then the students would return back to their homeroom teachers. Um, so students would leave the homeroom, go to the Get Focused teachers for instruction, and then return back to their homeroom. The advantage is that you, um, the master teacher really knows the curriculum, and the Get Focus, Stay Focus coordinator or lead teacher would be really able to support those five teachers um, um, in, a, in a real meaningful way. Also, there would be greater fidelity, and the quality of instruction might increase. The challenge with this is you have to schedule and um, make sure that those teachers have, they would not have a homeroom or extended learning, but they would be providing the instruction. Um, and also just um, now you have five teachers who are teaching the curriculum, which may decrease the school-wide initiative. Although I would say um, the goal is for the student to gain access to the content. And I think the way that um, 
administrators or lead teachers should prioritize the implementation of the follow-up modules should really focus on how can the students get most, uh, the highest quality of access to the follow-up module when you're making your decisions. So the next option is implementing within the core subjects. The core subjects are English and history, and the modules are embedded across academic disciplines, which all students are required to take. Um, the advantages is when modules are embedded across the core curriculum, students seem to take more, it more seriously. And I will have to say, when there's a grade attached, for example, if it's a unit in their English class, um, they recognize they need to start and finish it. It also fits into the master schedule. There's no pullouts. Um, there's no requirement to um, set up a different structure in order to allow students access to the curriculum. Uh, it also provides the curriculum to address the college and career readiness standards. And I should mention um, the modules were written in alignment with the English Common Core standards. So for example, if you did implement it in an English class, you would be um, teaching the English language standards as well as the college and career readiness standards. And it enhances school-wide initiative. We know that when things are implemented into the core subjects, it communicates a value. Um, whether that's accurate or not, um, it does, it seems to um, support that idea of we believe it's worth the time to take out what we were going to teach in order to implement it in our English or history class. The challenges are a fidelity to the program. So now you have um, an entire department or grade level um, team who has to implement the modules and that it has to also replace something that they were previously teaching. And I will say, um, and I will talk about this more, I was the English department chair and that reality of having to implement something into an English class seems like all the drop-in lessons are always in English and was something I was really concerned about. But we ultimately landed in, in placing it in the English class because we really felt it aligned with what we were already doing. And I will speak to that more um, in a little bit. Another method of implementation is a junior seminar. So I told you that these were designed grade specific, but one option would be to create a junior seminar that's a standalone course. For example, if your freshman course was called Success 101, this would be Success 102, and all modules are taught in sequence. Um, there is some overlap, so uh, adaptions would need to be made. The advantage is it could be offered as an additional course for credit perhaps dual enrollment, and it really streamlines the implementation. But the challenge is uh, it's a spiraling curriculum. So students will complete their freshman course, and then in their sophomore year, they'll review what they did in their freshman year and revise and update, um, and they'll do that in the junior and the senior year. And somehow that gap in time also allows them to really reflect. And you wouldn't get that same experience in junior seminar. Uh, but I feel that students would really feel prepared to go into the college going process um, if they in, did in fact do it as a junior seminar. I do want to make a slight note. When I mention college, um, I'm really talking about post-secondary education. So that is college and career readiness, and it's the idea of any training that would give them the necessary skills for the future that they want. Um, we also know that junior year is a very busy year, and so it might be challenging to find space in the master schedule to implement a junior seminar. Another method is uh, Focus Fridays, where it's across the curriculum. The 16 lessons are divided and taught by different faculty every Friday. And so you might have an English class do one Friday and the chemistry teacher do it the next Friday, and you divide it across um, the year and across the curriculum. Again, this would enhance the school-wide initiative. You have multiple teachers bringing in their experience, and you'd have a shared responsibility that might make the implementation easier to manage. So rather than English department feeling like all 16 lessons have to go into my class, now they can say, I'm taking you know, two or three lessons, and this other department's taking a few lessons. Um, the importance in this method would be to make sure that all students are getting access to the curriculum. The challenges is now you have teachers across the departments um, and multiple uh, subjects and grade um, having to implement it with fidelity. Uh, so the scheduling and pacing, it'd be really important, and uh, teachers would really need to be trained in order to make this Focus Friday a success. 
Some other options that we have um, heard of and want to mention is distance education or online option. So each module is through the online tenure plan and it walks them through the research project. I consider it a closed research project where it directs them to certain websites. So it could be done online. I would say, particularly for module one, um, this really requires a independent learner and a mature student. And I don't think that 10th graders are ready for that, but perhaps juniors and seniors might be. I found that 10th graders really needed some scaffolding and some support in order to make um, meaning of the modules, not because it wasn't relevant, but just because they were squirrely. So take that for um, what it's worth. Uh, you can also have a counselor as an instructor. You could do team teaching, and you could offer in workshop format multiple classes, perhaps afternoons, um, figuring out how to get the content in chunks um, throughout the year. So we've created this chart here to help you envision what it might look like. And when you're thinking about timelines, how do we deliver this content? Um, so you could do, if you wanted to cover a full academic year, uh, one session per month. If you wanted to do it within one semester, you could do one session per week, the Focus Friday. If you wanted to do it one continuous module, three-week module covering all 16 lessons as a unit. And then we have at the very top keystone activities where let's say um, you cannot give the full 16 lessons. We have prioritized the ones that we feel are most essential for students to have access to. To fill it, further illustrate this, um, we've created this handout that illustrates the um, all of the modules and which lessons we have identified as keystones. And all of these handouts will be available to you online at getfocusstayfocus.org. So please make sure you visit the website and um, feel free to access that. I also will share that one of the best ways to introduce this curriculum to a faculty would be to provide this handout that shows the scope and sequence and ask them, which lessons do you think our students need the most? And we have found that when teachers are looking at this document, they recognize how essential this information is and how many of them are having to do this in their classes. I know as an English teacher, I was having to help write college essays. I was having to have the counselors come in and pre present on college going. And um, so I think what your faculty will see is that a lot of what they've been doing is already um, is included in this module and can actually be combined so that you're um, hitting or killing two birds with one stone. So at this point, we often have um, teachers who feel like, OK, how am I going to implement 16 lessons? That's a lot. Uh, three weeks of our curriculum um, I would be giving up. And so some of the ways that we like to think about it is um, it, we know that every lesson begins with reviewing the 10-year plan. Is there a way that during the first week of school, could every English teacher or could there be a school-wide workshop where teachers bring their students to the lab and they review their 10-year plan? And if they did that at the end of the year, now you've reduced 16 lessons into 14 lessons. Also, if you think about completing the module in two semesters, that would be seven lessons per semester. So, And I also think that was a pretty amazing way to to encourage students to reflect and see how they've grown even over the summer and throughout the school year. Um, by beginning the year and ending the year school-wide, update your 10-year plan, and then teaching the lessons between both semesters or as a unit. Um, and in your manual and the instructor's guide, you can turn to 9-11, and there's a chart that shows which lessons go together. And this is important because um, certain lessons build upon each other, and so you want to make sure that you don't just complete at seven and, and cut a lesson that's tied together in half. So just check that out. And again, if you don't have your Get Focus, Stay Focus manual, um, they are available for purchase, and you can go to the getfocusstayfocus.org website and order a copy or learn how to. So here is where I want to share my experience as the Get Focus, Stay Focus coordinator 
and the implementation of the modules. So I want to say we implemented the modules before they had actually been written and published. Uh, or there was, we had the rough draft and I started implementing then, so I piloted it. So we began by doing it in a pull-out format. So students were in extended learning. I was the master teacher for module, this was just with module one. Um, and they would come in cohorts and I would teach them the module and then they'd go back to their class. And I want to say that in that moment or during that year, I recognized the value. Um, we had students create posters um, and module one students explore high demand careers and they identify which they create an education plan. And so what I had students do is um, write their ideal career what major they would need in order to have access to that career or certificate, what they would need in order to have access to that career, which um, institutions offered that, and what was their top choice, and what was the admission requirement in order to get into that uh, school. Or, and they created posters and they put it on the window. So these are 10th graders. I had 11th graders in my AP English Language and Composition class. They saw the 10th graders' posters and they said, Ms. Hansen, we don't, we didn't know that. We don't know, how do these 10th graders know it? And I said, oh, well, they're completing the follow-up modules. And they said, can we create a club so that um, we're, we have access to that same information. And so they did. They called it the Get Focus, Stay Focus. And it only was for a year because after that, we ended up having the modules implemented. But um, that's just an example of how this information was valuable to students. So year two, um, we decided to, rather than move all students to module two, I piloted Module 2 in my 11th grade English class, and we implemented the Module 1 in the English classes. And the reason why we did that was because some students um, are extended learning was at the end of the day, and they were absent for sports or for whatever reason, and they missed the content. And we really wanted to make sure that all students had access. So we placed it in the English class, and then I chose to work through Module 2 with my 11th grade students after the AP test. And that also made me feel really comfortable with the curriculum so that in year three, four, when we implemented module two in the history classes, um, I felt comfortable with the curriculum. And then again, I taught English 12, so I piloted module three in my English 12 class. And then the next year, we enrolled as a UC, module one in 10th grade, module two in 11th grade history, and module three in 12th grade history. And we often get the question, why module two in 11th grade history? And as I mentioned, I was the English department chair. And we knew that the common core testing was going to occur during 11th grade. And I felt that um, module one in 10th grade, we had already had a, a career resume writing unit. And so that really applied. But module two in 11th grade English class, it seemed too much. And so the history was willing to take that on. And then module three, we teach um, the expository reading and writing course developed by the Cal States. And they have a unit called What's Next. And it's looking at college and career planning um, and from an expository text point of view. And so we combined that unit with module three. And it really went well together. It, it flowed very nicely. So that's why we chose to implement it the way we did. So some of the lessons we learned over these years of implementation were that in order to increase student buy-in, we recommend that it's attached to a grade. And our extended learning was a pass, no pass. And so students knew that if they didn't turn in the or complete their online tenure plan, they still might pass the class. And so that became um, a demotivator. And so I really encourage you to make sure it's a unit and an assignment um, that they know will be graded. Attendance is critical. So by embedding the modules in core academic, you increase student participation versus those pullouts, unless you know your our pullouts again were at the end of the day or advisory was at the end of the day. And so that became an issue. Buy-in comes once the module is completed and a student can reflect on their progress. So students are like, what, we're doing freshman seminar again? No, this is very different and it's tailored to where you are as a 10th, 11th, and 12th grader. And so um, just recognizing that with anything new, um, there might be some pushback, but we've seen a real appreciation um, at the end of the module. One student said to me, Ms. Hansen, this just feels like a rough draft. 
on my life or on my next 10 years. And it is. It allows them to think and dream, but with direction um, and with access to resources. And also, um, students are the best way to get buy-in across your school community. We had them advertise the initiative by publishing their work around campus, as I already shared. And we also had them speak to the rest of the faculty about um, the value that they gained from completing the freshman course as well as the follow-up modules. And so um, that has been really important. And we didn't necessarily plan that. We had a you know back-to-school meeting, and I invited three or four students to speak about the impact that the program had on them, didn't prep them, and when they started speaking about the appreciation they had for their parents and how they felt like they understood why school mattered, um, our faculty truly bought into the program. So as I said before, our final placement has been in English and history. The timing, and this is really important, um, and I know Many of you who are listening is like, when? OK, so where, but then also when do we put it? We have decided that the 10th module 1 and 2 are going to be going at the end of second semester. So um, it is our final. We will have a course content final three weeks before the end of the year. And the final um, during those last three weeks will be the completion of their module 1, 2, or 3, uh, or module 1 and 2. And so um, this also works really well for those AP classes. They finish in May, and then they transition into looking at their future and planning um, and making some goals that they can actually work on over the summer as well. So we found that that's the best placement. 12th grade is the only one that's time specific. Because it deals with the college going process, half of it has to be given in the first semester. And as I already shared, I placed that um, in the English 12 class in alignment with the Cal State's expository reading and writing course. And then you finish it at the end, and it's also our final. Um, and it's this really great process, because in the ninth grade, our students have to uh, complete a mock interview and have a career portfolio. In the 12th grade, they finished out their 10-year plan um, through module three. They have to do a mock interview, dress professionally, have a career portfolio. And so during finals at Carpentry High School, you see seniors and freshmen dressed um, in professional attire and you know, giving each other fist bumps because they know that they're both going through a similar process. Um, and then one thing I want to really emphasize is that these teachers need to be trained. Um, we recognize that. For some of our teachers, the only career they've they've been in is teaching. And so um, how do we get them to think about what the college going process is like now? How is it different from their own experience? What are um, certain careers looking for in regards to skills? And we'll talk about that and some of the ways that we did that in really fun and engaging ways with our faculty. I also want to emphasize the role of the Get Focus, Stay Focus coordinator, who provides PD and support. So, with any technology, with any new implementation, things come up. And um, as the English department chair, I wanted my department to really feel that they could reach out and I could help answer those questions. And so determining who that is is really important. And I do recommend that that person would be different than the lead teacher for the freshman course. This is somebody who's specifically focusing on the modules and working with the lead teacher from the freshman course. So here is the tool I use with our faculty um, when we decided to implement it. And so just to give you a little idea of how this worked, um, we had the teacher, English to teachers of the 10th grade um, get sub, or well, actually I used to say we had, we got them subs and they came for a half day workshop with me. And I went through a PowerPoint similar to our first webinar that gave an overview of the Get Focus, Stay Focus module one. Um, and then we sat down and we looked at each lesson um, with the module in hand, and we looked at the time required, the materials needed. They identified any vocabulary or concepts they would need it to front load, um, and then any enrichment activities they would want to add, and if there was a computer lab needed. And the goal of this activity, um, there is an instructor's guide. There is a lot of resources, but I wanted to give my department time to actually work through the materials. They know their students best, and I just felt that um, they knew, you know, a lesson that 
the publishers may have said would take four to five minutes actually might take 30 or what have you, depending on their students. And so I wanted them to have time to work through the materials. And I used this tool. And this will be available, again, to you online at getfocusstayfocus.org. So once we went through that process, then it was time to implement. And um, so they felt confident that they knew what the content was. They knew how they were going to teach it. Um, and then we implemented. And this is where I can't say enough about administrative oversight. As I mentioned before, it's critical to have a lead point person. Um, we recommend that it be separate from the lead teacher of the freshman course, uh, although they should collaborate. And that this could be a teacher, counselor, and or administrator. And just doing simple things like walking through and answering questions, being able to observe and support, and making sure that it's being implemented with fidelity is really important. Now, um, if this ends up taking a significant amount of time, we just want you to know that in the Get Focus, Stay Focus program and instructional manual on 339, they have the responsibilities of the lead teacher and what this somebody in this role might do. As I've already mentioned, but want to say again, if you're considering dividing up the lessons, there is a um, strategy to that. So please get the Get Focus, Stay Focus instructional manual. Go to 9-11, and you will see which lessons need to be um, remain together. I cannot say enough about supporting the teachers of the Get Focus, Stay Focus follow-up modules. Um, this feels uncomfortable in some ways, or may feel uncomfortable with some teachers, so just making sure that they feel equipped and supported um, prior to with PD throughout implementation and after as you reflect and celebrate on what went well and decide what could be done better. In the Get Focus, Stay Focus manual, there is also an entire section that has unit lesson plans. So teachers do not need to feel like they need to reinvent the wheel. That is available to them. Um, and so you would make sure that you have that manual and provide the Get Focus, Stay Focus teachers with it. There also is um, an administrator's checklist that shows what needs to occur in order for um, the module to be implemented with fidelity. And then on 336 is a checklist for success. And it's great because it outlines in regards to um, summer, fall, winter, spring, and kind of what you need to do before, during, and after the school year. And so again, we encourage you to provide a copy of the manual to each module teacher. Now, whole school buy-in. There is an entire section 7 and section 11 in the manual that goes over um, how to create whole school buy-in. There's PowerPoints, so you do not need to reinvent the wheel. Please get the manual and use that. I want to give you some of the suggestions that we did um, at Carpinteria High School. One is there's this activity, and this is actually from the freshman course, where it has faculty, you ask them, what do students need to, need to know by the time they graduate? And you have them create a list. Um, and then there is a form where you can fold over, and it'll show all the different skills um, that 30 teachers determine students need to know. And so the teachers will see how that their list corresponds with that list. And then if you flip it over, it will show which pages in the curriculum that it aligns with. This is a great way to introduce the curriculum to the faculty and help them see what type of skills are taught. And then they can actually look through the materials and see, OK, if you said determination, where is that taught in this curriculum? Also, um, we did externships for faculty. So, you know, in service days, you typically have a guest speaker or um, someone come in, and, and a lot of times you're sitting way too long. Well, what we decided to do is we sent the faculty, and this is my principal's idea, into the community to work with businesses. And their goal was to identify the skills that these businesses felt um, they needed in their, um, their employees. And so to, to really build that, those relationships within the community and identify the skills that are necessary. I think it was one of the best in-service days our faculty has. We've done it twice. We do it every couple of years. Um, and it also helps us to be involved with our community. And all, next, we also had Dane Blanton Assembly. So he is a spokesman for Academic Innovations, who is the publisher of the freshman course curriculum and um, the co-writer of the follow-up modules. And he will, he's an Olympic gold medalist, 
and he will align his journey through um, professional sports but education and talk about the importance of having a plan once his professional career ended. Um, and he's also the intro to each of the videos during the freshman course, so students are familiar with him. So you would think, okay, let's bring him to the freshman course. Well, we actually decided to have Dane Blanton come and speak to our 10th graders prior to the unrolling the unrolling of the follow-up module one um, so that he could energize them and remind them, remember what you learned? Here, let's continue to build upon that. Um, so those are just some fun ideas that you might think of when you're creating whole school buy-in. But we know that um, when we're implementing a program, we need to address all stakeholders, and parents are essential in, in making sure that they understand how this program will benefit them. And so to accomplish that, there is a letter to parents on 1027. And there's actually one that just informs them and shares what this program is and how it's, um, how it's going to help their student. And there's actually one for non-supportive parents, parents who are saying, like, why do my kids have to teach this? Um, so make sure you refer to those letters. And I think it's really important to reach out to parents and let them know why and what and how their students are going to benefit from the curriculum. You can also invite parents to be guest speakers to host externships at their workplace, and to participate as mock interviewers. Um, and that is something that we build in as practice interviewing. And so inviting adults in and having them um, give students those real life experience um, is invaluable. Also, uh, during parent meetings, show a video of why a 10-year plan and help them to understand how it will help their uh, students and their student future. This goes without saying, but because of this being a multi-year program, I want to emphasize that every year you should update the faculty on the implementation of the Get Focused, Stay Focused initiative. If that means having students panel speak about it, if it means um, talking about you know students' 10-year plan of the month or something along those lines, but keeping them updated as to how students are growing and what they're gaining. Um, because it should be a school-wide initiative, and it shouldn't just be the module teachers or the freshman teacher, but all faculty members, staff, the janitor should be able to ask students, what's your 10-year plan? What are your dreams? What do you hope for? What do you value? What, do you, what, what is your passion? And so making sure that the goals of the program are continually being repeated. Um, and so you can make sure that you share the glow and grow ways that you can continue to um, improve upon, as well as the way that it's actually already supporting students. So at this point, this is where strategic planning comes into place at your particular site. You need to identify your visionary who is going to lead the way when you get back to your campus. Determine where you are in the 10-step implementation process, gather resources, what professional development is needed, what materials, information, resources do you want, and figuring out logistics. Which classes and with which teachers would the follow-up modules be best placed? Timing. Where would the follow-up modules fit best in the existing pacing guide and training? Who will coordinate and when will training occur for the module teachers? These are the questions, and I think just beginning to chew on or bite off each one of these um, will help you move forward in the Get Focused, Stay Focused initiative. So we have walked through an overview of the modules. We've gone through different implementation options and how to create school-wide buy-in. And now I think it's a great time to answer any questions that you have um, and help problem solve any, any um, obstacles that you see are in the way. So at this point, I'll take, I'm going to pause the recording and I will take a few questions.